Hello friends, I'm the Reverend Terry Peterson, Minister of St. John's in Gurik. Today is Thursday, the 15th of April. It's five o'clock, so it is time today for a bit of theology. Um, because though it is beautiful outside, and I went for a walk today with no coat on, inside it's a little bit chilly. So I'm just keeping my hands warm um, on my mug here. So it's time for some theology. First, we will build up our community, sharing our lives with one another. You can hear that Andrew wants to share his life with you as well. Um, the low point of my day today is that he started speaking to me at 5 a.m. about the state of his breakfast situation, which, as I noted yesterday, he's the pickiest eater of any feline ever to walk the earth. So what he wanted for breakfast, I don't know, but of the three foods available to him at that time, apparently none of them were what he desired. So he made that known to me very early this morning while it was still dark. Um, that's not the best way to start the day, but we're working through our relationship issues <laughs> nearly 15 years on. Um, so yeah, that was not, not a pleasant beginning to my day. Um, the high point of my day today is that I got to go out for a little walk with a friend in the sunshine and at the end we managed to actually get a cappuccino and some delicious baked goods at the amazing Wildfire Deli down in Kempuck Street. So I had a real live cappuccino made by someone who knows how to make that and just that made me so happy. It's the first one I've had in many, many weeks. so. I'm a little bit, you know, ah, but it's delicious. And the filled donuts also are delicious. <laughs> so the high point of my day may be a sugar and caffeine high, but it's up there nonetheless. So whatever your own high points and low points might be, I hope you will share them with someone. Share them with me, share them with a friend, call up someone that you go to church with, speak to one of your neighbors or someone in your house. Um, it matters, it really does. It seems so mundane, but honestly, these everyday moments are what make up life. And part of being in Christian community is that we share our lives together. So speaking of sharing our lives, we are moving on from Luke's gospel into the book of Acts. Acts is like Luke volume two. So Luke wrote his story in two sections. The gospel is the section about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And we read yesterday about how it ends with um, Jesus being taken up into heaven as he is blessing his disciples. And then the book of Acts begins with that same story with the disciples and Jesus on the mountaintop and him being taken up and then it goes on to tell the story of what the disciples do from there, how they live into their calling to be the body of Christ for the world. So we know some stories of that book are very famous, particularly the story of the first Pentecost, which was when the Holy Spirit rushed in like a loud wind and there were tongues of fire and there was speaking in other languages and everyone thought they were drunk even though it was nine o'clock in the morning. So that story happens in chapter two. And then after that, for the next few chapters, there are a bunch of different stories of how God brings people into this fledgling church community and what that looks like um, in the city of Jerusalem particularly. So um, there are a few times when that community is described, like their way of life together is described. So I'm just going to read two of those. And this happens several times, but these two I think will give us a flavor of what it was like in the earliest days of the church. So this was um, you know, 50 days plus, I don't know, a few weeks after 
Jesus's resurrection, these things started to happen. So we hear these descriptions. From the end of Acts chapter 2, we hear, awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. And then at the end of chapter 4, we hear something very similar. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. So these two descriptions um, about how the community lived together and organized itself are, I think, really important. So during this period, thousands of people are described as joining in with the 12 and then with the rest. Like there are many, many disciples at the beginning of the story, but now we're into the thousands. Like on the day of Pentecost, Peter's sermon moves 3,000 people to be baptized. And that is happening in every chapter, basically. There are groups of hundreds and thousands that are joining in. They are so compelled by the story of Jesus and by the witness and testimony of the followers of Jesus that they want to be a part of it. And um, all of them together, this growing community by the thousands, says they were of one heart and soul and no one claimed private ownership of anything but everything they owned was held in common and there was not a needy person among them because they sold their things and brought the proceeds and it was distributed to those who had need. That is an amazing vision of what the body of Christ can be like. Later on, Paul will write that we are to be like a body, caring for the weaker members with greater honor and um, insisting that no one is expendable, that instead we are meant to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. And here we see how that's playing out in practical ways. People are not just saying, oh, I feel sorry and sad with you. They're saying, no one should be poor, so I am selling my land and bringing the money and then distributing it to make sure that everyone has enough. That is not the way that we tend to think about church anymore. Um, maybe it never was. Maybe after that first few years after the first Easter, it all fell away. But that's the vision that the apostles had, like the followers, the first followers of Jesus set up a community that was meant to be interdependent, that all together would care for one another so that no one had too much and no one had not enough, but everyone had enough and that's what abundance would look like. Um, that, oh, every time I talk about it, people say, oh, that's such a utopian vision, it can never work. And maybe that's true. I mean, it breaks down in chapter five, we see what happens when someone um, sells land and then brings only part of the money, but they, <laughs> they said it was all of it. So the story there is not really about um, not contributing at all. It's about claiming they were giving it all when they weren't. So it does break down rapidly, but I don't think that means it's impossible. I think that means sort of like that quote, you know, that the um, way of Jesus has not been found too difficult. 
or that it has been tried and found wanting, it's been found difficult and not tried. And that's sort of how I feel about this. Like we haven't actually made much effort on a big scale to give in this way and to organize ourselves in this way to ensure that no one in the community is in need because we are handling it. Like that's just not a thing that we do. And we try sometimes on a governmental scale to do this with a social safety net. Um, but there are always people who don't want to contribute to that or there will be rules and regulations about who can be caught by that net and people fall through the cracks. And this vision is that no one falls through the cracks. So what would it mean for us to give of ourselves in such a way within our community that no one is in need? What would that look like for us as individuals? What would it look like for us as a church? What would it look like for our community to have a church committed to ensuring that no one is in need and willing to put ourselves on the line for that, to put our own desires to one side in order to make sure that other people have their needs met? Um, that's the kind of giving that I think the book of Acts is talking about. And that is a kind of giving that comes as a spiritual gift. It's something that the Holy Spirit makes possible in us because no matter how much we want to be generous, the reality is that most of the time we think about giving what we have left, which is not quite the same thing as giving it all and then everyone receiving together. So that's, I guess, our thing to think about for the weekend. And that's like not easy, obviously. And it wasn't easy in the book of Acts either. It wasn't easy in the first century. And it's not easy now. Life may feel more complicated in a lot of ways because now we own more things that feel more permanent and that require more upkeep, right? The things we have require ever more investment of our time and energy. But what if, what if, what if, what if we could give like this and live like this? Maybe people would see the body of Christ doing amazing things for the world, not just for themselves, and maybe that would be compelling in a way that they would want to know what was going on and to be a part of changing the world in that way. So let's ponder that together for a bit this weekend, shall we? Let's take a moment to pray together. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day that you have made. We give you thanks for the way that you call us into community. And we admit that sometimes we are not sure we want to participate in your community in the way that you ask of us, but we pray today for open hearts, open minds, and open hands ready to follow your lead in creating something that is beautiful and is for your world. Make us into your body, loving, serving, and caring for others. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends, I hope you have a great weekend ahead. I know it's only Thursday just now, but Friday for some people starts to feel weekend-ish. So I will see you on Sunday for worship and then next week again for Wine and the Word. But until then, cheers! and peace be with you.